Hey there, it's CJ Willie, and I'm back cracking a pack. Today I have pack number 28 in my 1988 Topps Mini Leaders box. I'm trying to see how many packs I have to crack to get all 77 cards in the complete set. I've included the link to the preview video in the description below, which gives a little explanation on the set and the highlights of what it could pull in cracking these packs. Since each pack has only seven cards in it, I'll guess, guess which categories or category or categories the player led their league. Then I'll flip the card over see how if I was right or how very bad my memory was at the 1987 season. I've also got my checklist out. Let's zoom in just a little bit here. Not too far. Um, to keep track of it, I'm going for my third complete set. So I'm going to mark off uh, pack 28. I counted up. This is going to be tight. I've got 48 more cards to go for three complete sets. I've got nine packs left, 63 total cards available, a little wiggle room for error, meaning I've only got about 15 cards to give. So hopefully I can make it in completing that third set. So let's start to crack this pack. All right. So uh, last video, we were able to complete set number two. Uh, by the time we hit pack 27, uh, hopefully um, I can get set number three, which was my goal to kind of get three complete sets out of this. All right, so let's take a look and see how close we get. All right, first card out of the pack is one that I need for the third set, Jimmy Key. Um, he played an important role with the Toronto Blue Jays in the mid to late 80s. Um, came up in his first year as a reliever and then was a starter. Uh, also pitched with the Yankees and Orioles. Um, Key was a pretty good pitcher. Uh, I believe he was a league leader in victories and ERA. So he was first in ERA with 276, fifth in game started, eighth in, in innings, and eighth in victories. Uh, in the American League, apparently 17 wins only got you eighth place. Uh, next up is Jose Canseco. So another one that I needed uh, for my third set. So looking pretty good here. Canseco, you know, came up with the A's with a lot of fanfare. Uh, had a cup of coffee at the end of the 85 season. 86 was rookie of the year. 87, 88 onward uh, was a great slugger. Um, you know, obviously he's uh, tied into steroids. Uh, you know, at least he admitted that he took steroids and he's outed quite a few other people. Um, Canseco, one of my favorite memories is when he was traded to the Rangers. Um, I think it was in 92. He was not a great fielder. And the ball, uh, kind of a medium fly ball to right field that he should have caught, bounces off of his head, goes into the stands for a home run. Um, Canseco was a league leader, uh, I believe, in RBI. Um, he didn't have enough home runs, I think, to be a league leader in home runs, but I'm going to go with RBI. Um, well, I was off. Uh, well, RBI, I guess if I had specified game-winning RBI, he had 17, 6th uh, in runs, and 10th in doubles. Um, 31 home runs and 113 RBI were not enough to be league leaders in 1987. Uh, next up is Nolan Ryan, um, who is also one that I need for the third set. Um, Ryan... Um, was fantastic Hall of Famer, a career leader in strikeouts, also a career leader in walks. Um, his record would have been a lot better wins lost if he had pitched for teams that gave him a lot better run support. Uh, came with the Mets, uh, pitched for the Angels, Astros, and then Rangers. Um, in 87, he was a league leader in ERA uh, with a losing record. He was 8-16 and 16 as the Astros slumped uh, in 87, the year after they were in the playoffs in 86. So first in ERA, I should remember he was also first in strikeouts. He was eighth in games started and ninth in innings pitched. Todd Worrell, next up, uh, another card that I need for three in the set. Um, Worrell, uh, pitcher with the Cardinals, um, he came up at the tail end of the 85 season um, was their closer immediately, uh, was their closer in the playoffs, um, including the faded 1980, or sorry, the game six of the 1985 World Series, where Don Dankinger blew the call and the Carl's Cardinals World Series. Worrell continued to be the closer for the Cardinals all the way through uh, 1990. Um, it, he later moved on to the Dodgers to finish out his career. Uh, in 1987, I believe Worrell was second in the league in saves. No, third with 33. 
He was also fourth in games finished and seventh in games. Bob Welch is our next card. Uh, good, we're hitting all the triples that I need. So that that's that's good to see. Um, Welch uh, was a longtime Dodger. Uh, finished up his career with the A's. As I mentioned in the previous video, he pitched with Dave Stewart, uh, Mike Moore, Kurt Young to form a really good rotation that led the A's to the World Series in 88, 89, and 90. Um, Welch um, was a pretty good pitcher with the Dodgers as well. Um, in 1987, I believe he was a league leader in strikeouts, ERA. I don't think wins, but I'll check it out. Um, strikeouts, he was third. He was fifth with 15 victories, first in shutouts, second in innings, fourth in games started, sixth in the ERA, and seventh in complete games. Uh, Welch had more of a rubber arm than Oral Hershiser and Valenzuela, Fernando Valenzuela, as uh, he did pile up a lot of innings, but didn't suffer any really significant injuries. Okay, Shane Raleigh is our next pitcher. Uh, pitch for the Phillies. Uh, I believe he came with the Mariners. Um, Raleigh has the distinction of playing on a pretty horrible Phillies team in 1987. Um, he was a league leader in wins, but a lot of those wins were pretty lucky as he had a high ERA and uh, quite a few walks. Um, he was a league leader with 17 victories. Um, that was good enough for second in the National League. In the American League, that didn't even get you on the board. It barely got you on fifth. He was first in game started and seventh in innings. Um, had a very high walk rate, um, not as many strikeouts. His whip, if they tracked it back then, would have been extremely high. Okay, Tim Raines uh, is another card that we need for the third set. Final card of the, the pack, Tim Raines, a Hall of Famer. Uh, came up with the Expos, spent uh, the vast majority of his career at the Expos. Eventually moved on to, I think, the White Sox and the Yankees. Um, Reigns was a pretty good player. Um, he was kind of the Ricky Henderson in the National League. Didn't quite have as much pop as Ricky. Uh, was a little bit higher in batting average and uh, was a pretty good defensive outfielder. Uh, Reigns stole quite a few bases. He would have had a lot more stolen base crowns if it wasn't for Vince Coleman coming up in the mid to late 80s. Um, Tim Reigns definitely should have been in the Hall of, Famer, Hall of Fame sooner than he was voted in but uh, was a really good player. He was a league leader, I believe in 87, in batting average, runs, and stolen bases. So he was first in runs with 123, third in batting average, third in on-base percentage, fourth in stolen bases, and fifth in walks. Um, my favorite card out of the pack is going to be, um, let's go with Tim Raines. Um, I think that Raines was really underappreciated um, he was a great uh, defensive outfielder, uh, was a top of the lineup catalyst, really helped the Expos during some years where they weren't all that great. Um, in the mid 80s, the Expos tried, you know, chasing for the National League East, but usually would fall short to the Cardinals and the Mets. Um, there are some great battles between the Cardinals and the Expos, and Reigns was a really key component to th those Expo teams. Uh, Partnering with Andre Dawson, the Expos had a pretty good um, offense. And then with Charlie Lay and uh, Steve Rogers, they had a pretty good pitching staff. But they could just never get it over to the top. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did like it, please subscribe and share. Also share with me in the comments what your favorite card or what you thought was the best card in the pack. Until next time when I'm back to crack the next pack of 1988 Tops Mini Leaders and my quest to complete set number three.